Hey, what's up, viewers? This is uh, Red Dog Stream, and um, came by to talk about the review of what happened on Friday Night SmackDown and the special Bragger Rights preview. So let's kick it. So, what we have here is this big SmackDown preview. And apparently, I just think, you know, um, Raw, I think, is going to pull a win over at Bragger Rice. And then The Miz is going to promote his gimmick with the fact, oh, he led his team to Bragger Rice. And I was the only Raw team to win at Bragger Rice. You know, that whole shenanigan. So, apparently, uh, my thoughts of Bragger Rice, I think um, Big Show maybe trade SmackDown. Like, I've been tweeting a lot. I'm the Rennie Extreme. So, if you find me on Twitter, please follow me on Twitter. And, um, yes, um, so I'm the Rennie Extreme and you know, on YouTube, but apparently, um, we get this, a big show tries to, you know, say some myths, like he's hiding behind big people, and that's for one fact. So I think Ezekiel and Seamus may overcome the big show at one point and pin him to lead to victory. So I think Zeke and Seamus may, and Miz may be the lone people standing, like at Survivor Series, where Seamus, Mac, I can tell you, and the Miz were the lone people standing at Survivor Series. That's when they became two unstoppable forces. Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger got easily eliminated, them. But yeah, so um, so this match did epic, and it was a lot of in intense. Like this Friday Night SmackDown really rocked the house, and they really did very excellent on it, pretty much. And this match was actually very good. And Kofi Kingston, you know, pulling in a surprising win that led the team to victory, apparently. So and then the match it didn't stop there. Be I mean, that was just very impressive. Impressive um, match from SmackDown. But bragging rights, I bet Raw is going to win for one fact. I mean, uh, the momentum is going to slow down. I think Big Show may be Trace SmackDown, like I'm going to say, and then lead the Raw to victory. But he's captain, so I don't know how that would come around if he's going to betray um, SmackDown. <laughs> so apparently we got this review. So, with Dolph and Vicky standing ringside, and, you know, Vicky's, um, handsome boyfriend, Dolph Ziggler, I gotta say, they're a great pair, and Vicky, you know, really promoted Dolph Ziggler better than Eric Escobar, and I gotta say, that was real terrible how Eric Escobar and Vicky broke up, and they tried to work an angle where Vicky, you know, but for the most part, you know, Dolph Ziggler, um, challenges Daniel Bryan to the match, and apparently, um, Dolph Ziggler slaps Daniel Bryan. And then he runs out the ring. I think this was a great build-up. Uh, Dan Bryan tackles him. That was a great build-up for, um, for um, uh, Bragg and Rice. But for the most part, Dolph Ziggler is going to win. I think Dolph Ziggler is going to win and pull a victory with Vicky's help. Or if Caitlyn somehow runs in and helps um, Daniel Bryan with, uh, to victory. So that would be great. But I think it would have been great for Aloisa and um, Dolph Ziggler to um, pair up. It would have been a great tag team, an odd tag team, I'm telling you. So, Ziggler and Daniel Bryan, you know, Ziggler makes the most funniest comment. He's claiming that he's the Super Bowl champion team, and Daniel Bryan is, um, is the high school kids. And he says Daniel Bryan is a high school wrestling athlete, and Dolph Ziggler claims that he's going to beat Daniel Bryan. But I think Dolph Ziggler's going to pull an upset victory with assistance from either Vicky or Caitlyn, for the most part, Vicky. So, that's what I think may happen. Dolph Ziggler's going to win at Bragging Rights, for the most part. So for the most part, we get Santino against Swagger. Santino, you know, always looking weird, fighting very hilarious than I ever thought he was. But Santino has been very impressive so far. And Santino nearly a good submission. I mean, Santino is just doing some impressive so far. And um, Santino, you know, looking great so far. He has these unwittingly weird senses where he sees what's coming and what's not, apparently. And um, I gotta tell you, Jack Swagger has been impressive ever since throwing um. 
ever since um Hornswoggle come in, it's like, what is he doing? He's chasing down the eagle. It's like, what's what's going on? Ever since Horny came down, they he chased the eagle. Hornswoggle winds up. Santino winds up nailing the cobra on the eagle and then tackle splash. And that was the most odd thing that ever happened. You know, a cobra. It's like, what the heck? That was a little random. They attacked the eagle. Hornswoggle Swagger is supposed to be on the same team. But eventually, um, Swagger, you know, makes him tap, and then he leads them to victory. But what a good victory. And the eagle, once again, after the eagle's assaulted, Jack Swagger at least um, wins the match. That's a weird So we get the dashy tip from Cody Rhodes. And this, this, this tip is hilarious. He talks about chat lips. I gotta say, that gimmick was actually great, and it was pretty epic. Well, I don't want to say epic, but it wasn't half bad. So, that's the best tip to give for the, you know, that, you know, he's just some chapstick, you know, outside of the public. You know, always gotta, you know, make your lips chap and stuff. But then he said, you don't want to be wasteful. So, that's what he did. And then he said, uh, after, um... Well, it said lip gloss is not just for the women, it's also for the men. And that was the most hilarious gimmick. You say a little tip that makes you look dashy. That's hilarious. It looks like a woman does. It does one step for me. It's not just for the ladies. The doorway to your success and your happiness is complete. You'll be thanking me later. I'm dashing Cody Rhodes, bringing you one step. To dash shape. That is a great gimmick. I gotta say, I had to listen to that. And that was, that's actually good. It's a good gimmick so far for Cody Rhodes. Hopefully he gets a future push in the main event. So, moving on a little bit in the match. Um, John Morrison, you know, gets a good upper hand so far in the match. And then that match was actually great. Like, the push for SmackDown has been good so far. Mainly a bird that really John Morrison put off a heck of a match. It was a lot you could not expect and a lot you didn't expect. So they did it. They, I like the booking in this match. The booking was just very excellent. John Morrison thought he had the Starship paint. I thought that was over right there. But I was surprised Alberto De Real nailed the counter. Like the counter just, you know, really was just odd. It was pretty collect it was pretty interesting too. So Alberto De Real executes the arm bar and then he makes some tap. Surprisingly, Bird De Real has been excellent. He's been impressive. I think he's gonna be one of the few powerful superstars on SmackDown so far. So we'll see how far it goes from there. So Bird the Real was very impressive and um nearly good powerful submission hold. And on top of that, you know, the ring announcer has been great. It was great for the gimmick. It's a great push. Hopefully the ring announcer still stays with him through the remainder of the career or we'll see what happens from there. But this has just been impressive so far. So moving on, we get Edge and CM Punk, and I gotta tell you, Edge and CM Punk, that match was actually great. Like, they've been having, pulling off some excellent matches, and this has been a great promotion for Bragger Rights. I can't wait to see what's gonna be going on at Bragger Rights, see what's, um, how great the pay-per-view is. Many people say the pay-per-view is just gonna be terrible, I think it's gonna be great. I mean, when they pull off great matches like that, I mean, it has to be this good. I mean, there's no way that, um... I mean, there's no way that um that this pay-per-view can be terrible if they pull off great matches on SmackDown. I mean, SmackDown's been pulling off some great promos so far ever since moving to Sci-Fi, and they I think this was a good move to go on the cable network, but they get some you know big popularity and stuff. So I think it's great they turn SmackDown upside down. Hopefully, this um change to Sci-Fi really means a lot. So apparently, we get um. CM Punk trying to nail go to sleep, and then, um, what is Zuplex? He tries to go for the spear, and then the Miz and his boyfriend, or I should say valet, Alex Riley, interferes with the match, which leads to a disqualification. That was very surprising. I did not see that coming. Tyler Rex comes in, attacks. Swagger nails the ankle lock. Sheamus comes in. Big Show comes in. Tries to nail out Ezekiel Jackson. And eventually, Rey Mysterio tries to come in. Edge nails CM Punk. If this was just a great build-up for sci-fi. I gotta tell you, Miss Mac Raw is gonna win at one point, and then it's gonna build up for the Miz's gimmick at one point. Or well, Big Show betrays SmackDown. We'll see what goes on from there. But this has been impressive promotion, in my opinion. And the Miz, I think, is just this could just push up the Miz gimmick a lot. Being captain, leading his team to bragging rights, apparently. So moving on, we get the Divas, a little taste of the Divas, and apparently we get 
Bret Hart and Natalia for some odd reason. Natalia, the funniest beard of all time. So, Ringing Out to Gets Interrupted by Michelle McCool. So, Layla was very impressive disguised with the Natalia attire. Michelle McCool looked very impressive as Bret Hart. She looked more like Ozzy Osbourne to me, not really Bret Hart. But yeah, she did look like Bret Hart. That was very odd. So, um, apparently that was just hilarious. I mean, I think she needed to change her voice a little bit. I mean, she sounded a little too much like her. She could have said, I don't know. I don't know how it's hard to, for her to do a raspy voice like Bret Hart did. Like, you know, it's just been great. Think you're trying to get me to a match? Think I'm stupid? But she said they worship Lake Cool because they're flawless. So, so apparently, eventually, soon we get Natalia and Kelly Kelly. And uh, Natalia's been getting all these ridiculous upper hands. Like, it's just been a, it's just been very odd. And then Natalia never tagged it, and they easily beat Lay Cool. I was like, don't you know how easy they are to be beaten? Nata- I mean, uh, Layla tries to nail the layout. Eventually, Natalia makes a sick counter, and uh, to uh. Ooh, to a slide pin, but eventually doesn't get that. And then when Natalia tries to get in, she eventually nails a sharpshooter and leads him to victory. So, um, that was a good match. Natalia never tags in. They still wind up winning, just like with Molina. They beat Lake Cool in 30 seconds. Like, they're easy to beat, I'm telling you. It's just, you know, if, they're, if they get ringside, get some good interference, and find some good used turnbuckles or up moves of their upper hands, then um, I think that would be a good victory. But Lake Cool's going to win this one. And then eventually Natalia's going to lose. So for the most part, Beth Phoenix is going to be the only one to come over Lake Cool. That's what I think is going to make happen at Bragging Rights. Or what will happen at Bragging Rights for the most part. So I won't be su- surprised if Natalia loses this match. But surprisingly, um, Lake Cool finds some schemes to pull on this victory for the most part. Well, I got to say, man, with the Randy Orton and Kane match, I think that was just... Um, that match was just great. It was a good, good push. A lot of tons, tons of pros, a lot of high prospects I had in this match. And Randy Orton actually did very good so far. I mean, Randy Orton and Kane had great chemistry in that match. Randy Orton nailing some sick counters, and Kane apparently nailing, you know, some sick upper hand moves of his own. Randy Orton nailing a good upper hand in this match. As it was just, it was great. I gotta say, it was odd. I thought Kane was gonna, I thought the match was gonna end in a DQ where everyone winds up interfering in the match, and then. Raw, you know, just winds up dominating the ring, and finally getting some payback or right, some way. So, Kane yelling a good upper hand. This match was great. I was surprised it was a clean match. Um, the only way Randy Orton, um, so Randy Orton somehow surprisingly um, pulls off a surprising win, you know, in that match because you know it came off, it came down with um, Kane. Um, eventually, um. Um, Undertaker interfering in the match, apparently. And then, uh, you see as the light goes off, Randy Orton gets the RKO and, uh, leads him, leads him to victory. And, you know, Kane winds up frustrated. He's, like, really frustrated. He's like, oh, where he is? But here's this great promo that happened. The ring goes. Undertaker winds up kidnapping him. Oh, my God. This is just hilarious. This is, like, one of these few of action movies that, you know, we saw or, um, these horror movies. This is just horrific. But for the most part, I think Kane is going to win, or I think the match may not happen. I think they should have just waited for the match in Survivor Series. And then, if somehow The Undertaker gets buried alive, he could return at WrestleMania, and then finally beats Kane. I think that's going to be great, but I don't know how long Kane's title reign will last. Hopefully it lasts there. That way it could be for the title and make the match even better. I'm telling you, and this is going to be the good push for Bragg and Rice. But Kane's going to win at the most part, and then he's going to make this powerful title reign eventually soon for the most part. And then he's going to probably win at Bragging Rights. So I think that would be great. Um, we'll see what happens at Bragging Rights. I'll be catching up on Bragging Rights. And so many extreme, taking you to the extreme.